Hi everyone. I hope that you and yours are having a safe and joyous holiday season. All of us here at the Chattahoochee Valley Libraries are ready to help you for the remainder of 2020 and more importantly, to make 2021 a happy and prosperous new year for you, your friends, and your loved ones. If you're picking up some holiday reading with our curbside book service, or you'd like an audiobook or free streaming movie, or need assistance searching for a new job, we can help. We're your place, we're your partner, we're your library. Happy holidays from the Chattahoochee Valley Libraries. We hope to see you soon. Hello, I'm Mrs. Clark from the Mildred L. Terry Public Library. Today, we will be learning about the history and the traditions of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is an annual celebration open to all that focuses on African-American culture, unity, and family heritage. Going Down Home with Daddy is a story that shares about the power of family traditions. Going Down Home with Daddy, written by Kelly Starlin Lyons, illustrated by Daniel Minter. On reunion morning, we rise before the sun. Daddy hums as he packs our car with suitcases and a cooler full of stacks. He says there's nothing like going down home. We leave when the sky is still dark with sleep. Sis closes her eyes, but mine stay wide open. I watch as we drive from city streets to Floyd highways under a sweep of sparkling stars. Little Al, Mama says after a while, you better catch some Z's while you can. I try to rest, but can't stop smiling. Soon I get to see my great grandma and granny and hang out with my cousins. But when I look at my hands, empty as the road in front of us, my grin fades. The anniversary celebration. I bet everyone would have something to share except me. I dozed off in a cloud of worry and wait till sunbeams tickling my face. I squint and see a familiar John Deere tractor store and a gray silo standing at attention. We're almost there. Sis and I sit up straight as pines when we see Granny's wood frame house. She's right where we left her at the last year's reunion, scattering corn for her chickens like tiny bits of gold. There she is, Sis shouts. Granny spreads her arms wide and wraps us both inside. My, my, she says, and showers our cheeks with peppermint kisses. I miss you so. All afternoon, a parade of family comes home. Grandma Loretta and Grandpa James, aunts and uncles, and more cousins than I can count. Got a head just like your daddy, Uncle Jay teases me. Daddy's eyes twinkle. Now, I know you're not talking about heads. Can't take them anywhere, Grandma Loretta says, laughing. While the grown-ups catch up, we cousins run to the fence to visit Grandma's cows and goats. You doing something special for the celebration, Isaiah asks sis. Singing Grandma's favorite song, His Eyes on the Sparrow, she says. How about you? Reading Mother the Sun by Lexi Hughes. I made a scrapbook in Grandma's favorite color blue, Devin says. You got something, little Al? I kicked a stone, and my eyes start to burn. Ready, ready for a tractor ride? Sis asks, saving me from having to answer. I swallow hard and climb into the trailer with Sis and Mama. I lean against the hay as Daddy drives us past the smokehouse and fishing pond and rumbles by a field dotted with puffs of white. Cotton has been on this land a long time, just like us, Daddy says. Pa would drive your Uncle Jay and me on a tractor just like this one. Look to your left, Pa would say. Look to your right. The land just seemed to go on forever. Everything you see, Pa told us, is ours. I think about what Daddy said and sit up tall. Pa is gone. But this is our time to come together and to remember. Daddy's words make me want to share something more than ever. 
when the ride stops, not asking what to do. Think with your heart, little Alla, Daddy says. That's what Paul always told me. Just then, we heard Granny, come on and get this food while it's hot, she calls from the porch. We dash inside. The dining room overflows with love-made dishes, smoked turkey, collards, mac and cheese, okra, and tomatoes, and biscuits oozing with mohaw jelly, just the way Daddy likes. Hand in hand, we create a ring inside the house Paul built for Granny. Heart to heart, we share what we're thankful for. Nothing is more important than family, Granny says, tearing up as she looks at every face. Amen to all around. On Sunday, I feel sick. Not a fever and sneezing sick, but I wish I had more time sick. The celebration starts at dusk. Get a move on, little Alan, Grandma Loretta says. You know Granny doesn't play. Growing up, we'd never miss the service. At church, Daddy points to a spot where he and Uncle Jay perform a duet on a trombone and a trumpet. My hands were shaking so much, I could barely play, Daddy said. But when I saw Granny smiling, my jitters went away. I wondered if looking at Granny would help me. But when our eyes met, all I could think about is being the only kid with nothing to say. After service, we headed back to Granny's and changed into our reunion t-shirts. Generations of our family smiled from wall, from every wall. Mama, sis, and I peered at black and white pictures of Pa and Granny. Their eyes, brave and bold, reminds me of Daddy's. You have their eyes too, Mama says. That's when it comes to me. I think about everything I see when I'm here. I think about the tractor ride and Daddy's stories. I think about walking in Pa's and Granny's footsteps and those of our people and Native people long before. I think and collect treasures from our land. I lift my head to the sun. Just before satin night falls, we sit outside on porch steps and metal lawn chairs. It's celebration time. Our people were stolen from Africa and shipped to this continent and changed, Daddy says. But no one could lock away their dreams. They dreamed on this land during slavery. They dreamed on this land as they made their way out of no way and fought Jim Crow. 75 years ago, a farmer and a teacher bought this land. Daddy gazes at Granny. And now, and look at us now. One after another, cousins offer their tributes. Sis song makes Granny's eyes shine. Isaiah's poem gets everyone nodding. Then I step forward. I feel like a spotlight is blazing just on me. I look down and say nothing. It's okay, little Alan, sis whispers. I lift my head and see gleaming smiles. I try again. Cotton for the quilts. Granny made to keep her children warm, I say holding a white cloud in my fingers. A pecan for the trees Pa planted and all the kids loved to climb. I pinched dirt and let it rain to the ground, an earth for land that's ours as far as we can see. Fireflies wink and whirl in a carnival around us. That's all right, I hear Granny say. Daddy flashes a thumbs up. I grin up at the moon, it glows back at me. We are mighty family, Daddy Booms. Mighty, we roar back. Then we try to make the night stretch on forever. As grown-ups slap cards and checkers against tables, we cousins dig through old trunks and laugh until our hearts explode with joy. Too soon our goodbye morning comes. We hug all the way to the door. Then we climb into our car and watch Granny and her house shrink and disappear. When we go down home with Daddy, everything we see holds a piece of him in us. We head up the highway thinking about family and dreaming about next year. The end. The Suitcase Project. This project is from the book entitled Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. I created my box from a cardboard lunchbox and contact paper. 
This project is an individual or family journey. It is to explore your past, your present, and your future. Some items to include in your suitcase. You can include a photo from your childhood. This is a photo of me when I was in the kindergarten. You can also include two of your favorite quotes. I've included um, one that says, good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is your better and your better is your best by St. Jerome. And only I can change my life, no one can do it for me by Carol Burnett. You can also include something that represents the type of music that you like to listen to. I enjoy listening to Christian music, so I have a cross. Here's a menu from a restaurant where my husband and I ate while we were on our honeymoons in New Orleans. Here's a map from the early 1930s of a place where my grandparents, my parents, and my uh, great-grandparents were raised. They were raised in Harris County, Georgia. Here are lyrics from my favorite song, Because He Lives. Here's the itinerary of a cruise that my husband and I took. Here are color, these are my two favorite colors, white and purple. Purple represents royalty and white represents purity. And last but not least, here's an image that represents my ancestor. This is a sewing machine that was once owned by my great grandmother my memory box. If you'd like to learn more about Kwanzaa, please enjoy this PowerPoint presentation that follows.